Yeah, I'm here. And we're back. Do we have sponsors for this segment? Can we talk about Pony Express? Pony Express. Check out the Community Edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean, mean, pen-testing machine. For all those hard-to-reach places, there's Pony Express, which is on the screen right now. Visit PonyExpress.com and check out their previous segments on the show as you can qualify to win cool stuff. Yes. And Already. I'm back with Rob Weiss, Principal Engineer at Altamira Technologies Corporation. Rob, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Rob's on tonight to tell us about a SCADA CTF that he's hosting on October 12th. Is that right? 11th? 12th? Yeah, uh, 11th and 12th 11th at and 12th. Uh, George Mason University. Cool. So how, how did you uh, come to create a SCADA CTF? Um, well, one of the, the biggest problems that we found um, – in, in some of our research was uh, the, the, the fact that SCADA is just vulnerable and there's no authorization, no authentication. And a lot of these devices, you can walk up to them, you can plug in uh, uh, a laptop and immediately get on the network. And so we decided, you know, let's, let's take a look at some real world SCADA devices and kind of figure out whether or not they're as vulnerable as we think. And, and within 15 minutes, one of my interns this summer was able to actually own an RTU uh, using Pi Modbus. And uh, so what we decided to do was kind of extend our CTF from last year and really make it SCADA this time. So uh, it, it was a, the next evolution, a version 2.0 of the, uh, the event that we did last year. Uh, so it's kind of kind of very interesting to see how uh, um, what you can do with the remote terminal units to affect uh, industrial control systems and in general very cool and now how many teams are you accepting for the CTF um, we are looking for 40 teams wow. uh, currently we have about 15 signed up and we're looking for a lot more. Uh, it's a local competition, meaning you actually have to be on site. Okay, that was going to be my uh, next question. <laughs> it's a wired. It's a wired competition. No wireless. Uh, we're running drops to the to the individual teams. Uh, we're giving the individual teams a team network with a uh, an image that is the nuclear power plant, which is what is controlled by SCADA. Um, so. The, the 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 teams are supposed to run the HMI to gain points and then attack and defend against uh, forty other teams. Oh, so it's an attack and defend CTF. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um. So and and we also have physical challenges. So uh, we actually have. So a, like, uh, yeah, each team an, each team just gets a VM, but then you've got other stuff that you set up on the network that uh, points are awarded or taken away. Exactly. So we do we do offense defense points. We also do an Easter egg hunt. Um, so you can go out and try to find uh, the Easter eggs. Do uh, via uh, encryption encryption challenges, uh, uh, obfuscation challenges, uh, all kinds of really intricate um, hidden eggs. I'm not, I'm trying not to. Yeah, give don't too much give away. it away. Don't give it away, Rob. <laughs> Um, so, but you also said there's a, you have an etch a sketch pad or something. What's yeah. That all so, about? so one of the, luckily, uh, this summer we had an intern who's, uh, whose dad owned a industrial control system equipment company that supplies equipment to a lot of, uh, vendors on the East coast. And so one of the first things we did was, uh, pinged him and said, Hey, can you give us a bunch of demo equipment so we can play around with? And so we, what he did was it gave us three, four, four, four remote terminal units, um, along with uh, some some controllers, and we decided what would be more fun than to actually see if we couldn't hack that equipment and attach it to an etch a sketch, and then make the etch a sketch do whatever our bidding was, uh, which would actually go about proving the fact that these these devices were a purpose for another. We're, we're designed for another purpose, but we've taken them and taken control of them and are now able to make them do our bidding on drawing crazy things on Etch-A-Sketches. So um, that'll actually be at the competition, and that's actually a high-value point 
um, if you're able to hack the etch a sketch and draw what you want to draw on the etch a sketch. I, if someone figures that out, you're going to get some very interesting drawings. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, probably not PG 13. Probably is not. What we're <laughs> I have some ideas of what I would draw, and it is not appropriate. That's that's exactly <laughs> right. Well, that's that's really cool. Um, so, uh, how does one put together a team for this competition, Rob? Um, so we're looking for teams of all skill sets. Our competition brackets are broken up such that um, we have uh, three to four brackets in the first flight. And once you uh, get through the first flight, which is six hours, uh, your score will then segment you off into different flights based on your skill level. So um, we have three flights and three rounds. So we have nine potential uh, possibilities for prizes. Uh, total prize money this time is $5,000. Um, so essentially what you will do is after the first round, you'll be segmented off into different brackets so that you can actually compete a bit against people sort of in your skill set. So all the newbies can come in um, and, and learn, and all the experts can just advance and win money. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, our subject matter experts on hand to actually guide the, the younger, more junior teams and helping them out to be a little bit more successful, actually come learn through some things. Uh, in between the rounds, we'll actually have debrief sessions for two hours where we can do question and answer sessions, um, trying not to give away, obviously, the keys of the kingdom, but help the, the people uh, get um, set up for the next round. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the most interesting thing about it is we also have the physical challenge side. We have some lock picking challenges. We have some crypto challenges. Um, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So there's, there's lock picking involved with the SCADA CTF. That's kind of interesting. Well, What's I the, mean, in order to get to the industrial control system yeah, equipment, you got to yeah. pick a couple locks to get in there, don't you? Right. Before you can plug in. That's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so what what skill level of uh, of kind of people need to apply for this? So um, we're looking for uh, high school teams. We're looking for college teams. We're looking for pro teams. Um, the uh, the skill level is you know whatever you want to bring to the table. We're looking for a team size of three to five individuals because you have to have one player playing the the game. Uh, to keep the HMI up and running and gaining points. Mm -hmm. And then you need to have somebody who's willing to, to figure out how to patch and defend and somebody who's able to figure out how to attack. And then uh, um, if you have some extra players, you can go look for Easter eggs. Right. So we'll put some, some stuff on your local network. We'll put some stuff on some perimeter networks. We have... 50, 60, 70 networks. So in the in the CTF, we have 70 networks of machines. Wow. Um, and it's all virtualized. And we'll be bringing all the equipment. And uh, the teams can bring whatever gear that they want to to set up on. So uh, it's, you know, it's a no holes barred. There's only a couple things that are off limits. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so what, what do people win? Um. We've got a bunch of swag that we're giving away and uh, uh, some challenge coins, uh, some some USB sticks. No, no, nothing really interesting about those USB sticks. Sure. Uh, but <laughs> uh, the um, the other the other thing is is uh, the prizes for the three three flights. So we have uh, first, second, third prize for first flight, second flight, and third flight. So we're giving away uh, of the forty teams, nine will come away with cash prizes. Nice. Very cool. So, like so far, that. you mentioned that in protocol wise, you were using Mutbus uh, with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, Pi. Uh, what other protocols have you implemented, if any? Um, so, we're doing, uh, we're doing Modbus um, and uh, over TCP IP is kind of what the focus of what we're looking at uh, uh, measuring the exploits against and trying to figure out. You know what's kind of successful, and why why are these systems so vulnerable, and why do people even bother putting them online? I mean, not I think it was like a month ago uh, we saw the Norse um, ICS thing that kind of popped up, showed all the ICS systems around the world, 
and there were way too many in the United States. So, <laughs> so the fact that you're you're putting those kinds of ICS systems on the wide open internet and they're actually able to be seen just means you're just asking for it. So our goal here is to kind of figure out like what are people doing to d- do the attacks? How sophisticated are these attackers? And is it you know what's the defense? Um, what's the defense for it? Is it a you know, change in the hardware, is it a change in the software, is it a change in the implementation? Um, but something's got to happen. Does it cost money to enter, Rob? Oh, yeah, no. It's, uh, free it's absolutely enter? free, except for parking at GMU, and I can't control that. Um, but the, the interesting thing is uh, we're not asking for any type of registration fee. Um, you can run to the day of the competition up to registration, and we'll bring you on. Um, we're not going to close registration at all. So if we have more than 40 teams, that's great. If we have under 40 teams, nah, it will, we might adjust the bracket play a little bit. Mm-hmm. But everybody is going to be able to participate um, all the time. Awesome. Excellent. And is there a website where people can find more information? Uh, yeah. Um, they can go to infosec.altamiracorp.com. That's A-L-T-A-M-I-R-A-C-O-R-P.com. And uh, there's a link right off of that site that will give you all the information that you need to know about our uh, hackathon. Rob, are you ready to play five questions with Security Weekly? <laughs> you thought you were getting off the hook, didn't you? Yeah, I was hoping. Hold on. I'm going to need to have a maybe Yeah, a there scotch. you go. Oh, yeah, a little, a little some <laughs> bullet. Three words to describe yourself. Uh, old school freaker. If you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? Garot. If you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Not Red Team Field Manual. In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? Absolutely first. Pick two celebrities to be your parents. Angelina Jolie. And what was her dad's name? (laughs) John Voight? I don't know. Now the question is, pre or post? Pre. Okay. Pre what? Boobies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd definitely go for post, but uh, those that know me aren't yeah. surprised by that. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Rob, <laughs> thank you very much for appearing on Security Weekly. Uh, we, we hope to have you back on where we can do kind of a longer interview. I know this one was kind of compressed and very focused on your skate to CTF, which is very cool. <laughs> Info Absolutely, guys. Set, thank yeah. you very much, and I appreciate uh, the time you gave us tonight. Thanks, Rob. Infosec.altamiracorp.com. If you're in the area uh, in Maryland, uh, I strongly suggest that you uh, go register for this free event. I mean, why wouldn't you? Just spend, spend a couple of days hacking at skate and stuff for free. And if you win, you get cash. So I thought that was kind <laughs> of a cool thing to – Yeah, thanks, Rob. It's like my favorite video game. Yeah, for bringing it on the show and, and letting our listeners know about it. So hopefully you get some more teams. And we wish you the best of luck October 11th and 12th. And, and what uh, city is that in? Uh, it's uh, down in uh, at GMU, uh, George Mason University campus in Fairfax, Virginia. Um, oh, it's in Virginia. Okay. Yeah, so uh, come down early, sign up, and we'll take care of you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Rob. Cheers, guys. Have, Have a, a good great one. one. Goes to show what I know about where George Mason University is. I thought it was in <laughs> Maryland. Jeez. So with that, we'll take a short break. I'm going to go read up on geography, and (laughs) we're going to come back and talk about the shell shock vulnerability with Space Rock. So stay tuned. All right, Paul. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. All right, bye.